Hi, I'm Emil, the Practical Engineer, and today I'm showing you my workshop. Let's start with some general info about the workshop. The workshop is about 3 meters this way and 2 meters this way. That's about 9 by 6 feet, which is not very big. When I got this workshop, I already knew that I was going to make projects and film them in here. So I insulated all the walls from temperature, but also from, for sound from the outside. And I also insulated the roof and I have this perf board. With that, it actually dampens the sound of my voice a bit, makes the audio a bit more clear. I got these nice LED panels, I have three of them with all the same color temperature. That also makes it a lot easier when filming here yeah, to get consistent light. Having a small workshop can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. Pro side of having a small workshop is that when I'm standing here, I can reach things on this side and on this side. Basically half my workshop is within arm's reach. That's really cool. The disadvantage is that you cannot really build large projects. I cannot build a dinner table in here because it's basically the size of my workshop. But for the project I do, it works really well. This is my workbench. It's basically just an assembly table that I use as a workbench. I try to keep the top clear at all times. When I'm building stuff, I only want to have the stuff that I'm actually working on on here to keep it nice and tidy and also for the video it looks a little bit cleaner. Then underneath here I have my bolts, I have screws, I have my air compressor and I have my welder. And it works like this, but it's not really optimal use of space. It's, the screws are hard to get to, there's a lot of unused space here. So I am planning to build a proper workbench in the future, but not yet. One downside of this workbench is when you hit it with a hammer, it's really light, so everything bounces. You don't get a really solid slab. Good thing about this workbench is the size. It's about 60 centimeters deep and 120 centimeters wide. And that's basically uh, perfect for everything that I built. It doesn't take up too much space in the shop and it's rarely that the workbench is too small. Then if we move up from here, we get to my tool wall. This is my tool wall and here I keep all the tools that I use regularly. I really like the storage idea of Adam Savage, which is called first order retrievability, where you never have to move something to grab something. So here I can just grab this if I need it, put it back. That also helped me to keep the desk empty. If I need to put it in a drawer, I always leave it on the desk. So I have my pliers over here, some um, other pliers, safety goggles, pens, pencils, knives, screwdrivers, my wrenches, and I also have my sander and my jigsaw over here. And then this is my on off switch. Since I have uh, kids, I want to keep them safe. They should not be in here anyway, but when they would come in here, I want to be able to just turn everything off and be safe. What I also liked a lot that I put in my workshop is this paper dispenser. When I'm working here, it's super handy to have some shop paper at your disposal at all times. So. If you're building a workshop, get one of these. The next to the paper dispenser is my track saw. I use this track saw a lot as you've seen in my videos. And with this thing, I can just grab it and put it back when I'm done with it. No need to mess with the case or put it somewhere. It's just within arm's reach. This is basically my main working area over here. It's my desk with the tool wall, but I also have what I call a tool bench over there. So this is what I call my tool bench. My main tools that I have over here are my disc sander, my drill press and my vise. The idea behind this desk is to not take up too much space and but still give a space for my stationary tools which are now these three but hopefully I will be able to add a small milling machine over here. So this is my disc sander. I've probably used it in every single project that I've done since I bought it. So this is a huge time saver and I would definitely recommend getting one like this. Get a powerful one with a big motor. Then close to the disc sander I have my sanding station basically. I keep some rolls of sandpaper in here. I have sheets on the side and here I have some random sanding stuff, some loose pieces of sandpaper and I also added some tape storage on the top. Then moving forward from my disc sander I have my battery powered tools over here for now. I did hang them on the wall because they're easy to reach but I'm thinking to make a more complete solution where I have a nice rack where I can hang all my power tools but not yet. So they are here, easy to grab and also easy to put away when you're done using them. So that helps me to keep it clean and yeah, keep it organized. This is a super cheap drill press that I bought for 30 euros second hand 
and it's I'm super happy with it. It's it's so much easier than just using a hand drill, especially for metal work, but also for woodwork if you want to drill things straight or need to drill a lot of the same holes. It's a huge time saver. So I'm really happy to have this here on my desk. To make it even easier, I drill the hole in my drill bit cassette and just hang it here. That way I always have my metal drill bits here and my wood drill bits. I don't use them so often so they're underneath my desk. I'm probably gonna get a whole lot of comments underneath this video saying that I mounted my vise wrong and you're right about that. When I mounted my vise I didn't think of this and I just put it all the way back so it wouldn't stick out too much and I wouldn't walk into it which I'm still very happy with. But the thing is I cannot mount something long underneath because it's so far back on the table. When I mount something long it will just simply hit the table and stick all the way to the top. So I yes, I should move it forward but I didn't get to it yet and I only had that problem once so far so there's no rush to do it. <laughs> okay let's talk about this thing. This is a bandsaw vacuum cart that I made about when I got this shop and I had the bandsaw and one day I was like I need something quick so I built this. I never finished it. I didn't design it properly. I didn't design it at all actually so it's big and it's on wheels so I can move it in theory but in practice I can never get it out because there's wood something there or it's useless. So next week I'm gonna fix this and make something small that does the same thing and looks pretty. Next week. But I do have my bandsaw on this card. This bandsaw together with my disc set is like a power team. I use it for a lot of the models that I make. As you can see in my videos then I make a template, I cut it on the wood, cut it out and send it to the edge on the disc sander. It's super handy. It's a small bandsaw but it does 99% of what I need to do with it so for this shop it's perfect. Then on the opposite side from the bandsaw is probably the biggest tool in my workshop, my leg. bought this thing uh, two years ago as a big pile of rust for 200 euros. I cleaned it up, fixed it up and now I have a working lathe. So that's pretty cool. It is not the most accurate lathe ever but for the work that I do I'm pretty happy with it and I can use, I can work around it. So for the money it's a great tool. What I'm not so happy with is the amount of space it takes up in my workshop. Also because this frame that I built and the need I never really finished it. I made a frame which is really nice but I should have put some storage underneath or something. Now I just dumped a lot of stuff and that's it. So I will work on that in a bit probably or not. Who knows. Having a lathe in the workshop is just a great tool. Especially if you want to do some mechanical stuff. It's really handy to have and it doesn't have to be super expensive. If you look second hand you can get one fairly cheap. Underneath the tool bench I have this storage system installed and it's I've seen uh, Laura Kampf make something similar to this and I thought it was a great idea so when I was making this I implemented here as well. The idea is that with these clear containers you can instantly see what's inside. So I have some drill bits in here, I have my dust mask in here and yeah, from a distance you can see what's inside, grab the container you need and work with it. Then over here I have more storage stuff and there are these storage containers and you have these in all sorts of shapes but the cool thing about these is that the things can be taken out. That makes it really easy to sort them, to arrange them how you want it and also to take stuff out. You can just take these if you need these, put this back and you don't need the whole thing all the time. I'm super happy with that as well. And then over here I just have some other random stuff where I didn't have a place for. <laughs> In a workshop this size you can win the most space by properly organizing your storage. I like to have a lot of stuff here on storage so I don't have to go to the shop all the time. For some things that work but for other things it doesn't. For longer materials like metal tubing, wood etc. I've made this rack over here. It's above my tool bench. It's out of the way. I didn't use this space anyway and 
as you can see I can use I can store a lot of tubing metal tubing aluminum wood everything in here and I have it when I need it super handy unfortunately the thing with the metal doesn't work so well with sheet wood like plywood or sheets of metal and so right now I have it standing here and I have about one sheet of plywood a little bit more standing here right now and it takes up a lot of useful space so I'm still trying to find a solution to store my wood. If you have a great idea on how to store plywood in a small workshop or any other small workshop idea let us know in the comments below and we can all learn together. Apart from wood I also try to keep a lot of other things in here. I made this with idea that I can have these boxes, also clear boxes so you can see what's inside for projects that I'm working on but didn't finish. Uh, it kind of works, there's a project in here that I started on and didn't finish but I think I will never finish it so I just probably should get rid of it. But here I can have three clear boxes with running projects and here I also have place for three clear boxes. Uh, at the moment I use this for materials for the lathe and in here there's some other stuff for the lathe as well. Having the clear boxes makes it really easy to see what's inside. With a non-clear box it's kind of a mystery what's inside. You have to get three of them out to see what's inside to find stuff and you'll just lose stuff. The clear boxes, huge win. Here behind the lathe I have more uh, storage for long and thin pieces like all the round stuff for the lathe. Some pieces of wood that are longer but not as long that I can put in the rack on top and this was behind the lathe anyway I wasn't gonna use this space so making this rack here gives me a lot of extra room to store stuff then above the rack I have my clamps same as with most of my other tools I have just put them on the wall make a nice mount for it and I can grab them when I need it and put them back when I'm done with it that way they're never laying around making a mess if you have other great tips to improve a workshop like this, let me know in the comments below so we can all learn together. I'm planning to do a workshop build about every month from now on to improve the space even further and help you also to improve your workshop and make it super functional. Make use of all the space that you have. So if you want to follow that, hit the subscribe button below and check out the playlist over here. Don't forget, dare to experiment and have fun creating. See you in the next video.